do you think that Harry and Meghan changed the royal family dramatically? Remember, Meghan was only here for three years. Do you think they've had a, had a, had a, had a transformative impact on the royal family, or are they just carrying on as normal and, you know, stoically just, just, just getting on with the job? No, I think Meghan and Harry have had an, a hugely negative impact on the royal family. Yeah. I think the damage is everlasting and continues. And I think that the tragedy is that they try terribly hard to help Meghan. Uh, after all, Charles escorted her into the wedding in St George's Chapel. The Queen assigned over half a dozen people to look after Meghan, try and help her get into the ways of the royal family. But they could never win. We know now in hindsight that Meghan never really intended to stay. Her guest list to her wedding showed her real ambition was to be a star in California. Uh, and Harry's friends were excluded from the guest list in the evening, from the dinner. So we know that the agenda was something which the royal family could never really get to grips with. And that's why their reaction, once the assault came through the Opera Winfrey and through Netflix interviews, was lame and self-defeating. They should have been far more aggressive in their response to assert their own credibility. It's really interesting. I remember, you know, reporting on it at the time and, and trying to get a sense of the of the atmosphere. And I think there was shock more than anything. I think there was almost a paralysis, particularly after Oprah. They, they didn't do anything until 24 hours later because it came out in America overnight. And they said, well, we're going to wait till it appears on, I think it was ITV on the Monday evening, and then we will react. Um, there was like a, a collective kind of palace deep intake of breath. It was like, what on earth are we dealing with? With it, with, with with here, but well, it's three years on now, or four years on now. I mean, how, do you think we've got over the Harry and Meghan show in the UK? Do you think we've moved on? No, because I'm after that was the publication of Spare Harry's biography, which peddled even more lies and more d trouble, and was of course again a worldwide bestseller because until then the world was fascinated that a royal, a two royals, could be so disloyal and treacherous. They never had that in their lifetimes before. I think there's a waning interest in them now. People are beginning to see the truth, which I exposed uh, three years ago, two years ago in my book, Revenge. I mean, the truth about them is they are narcissistic and intent on uh, self-glorification self to profit from their notoriety. Uh, but at the time, no one wanted to believe it. That's always the problem with iconoclasts. They tell the truth, but no one actually wants at the time to believe it could be that bad. Well, people have heard what they've had to say over so the last four or five years, you know, through Spare, through Netflix, on, on Oprah. People have listened to what they have to say, and some, you know, a lot of people were... Their popularity has gone down since they've told their story. We can talk a lot about the past, OK? We can talk a lot about the, the failures at the palace or the problems that... that or the, the mistakes that Harry and Meghan committed or deliberately inflicted on the royal family. Where do they go now? Where, in four or five years' time, if we're sitting down here talking about Harry and Meghan again and Thomas Markle and Harry and Meghan's relationship with the royal family, where are we going to be? What's, what's the future for the Sussexes? Well, the future of the Sussexes, I think, is pretty grim. I think that they're on a permanent decline. Uh, but they will, whenever they need money, whenever they need uh, publicity to stoke their reputation, they'll drop another uh, little bomb. I mean, we're still waiting, of course, for Meghan's own autobiography which I'm sure she is penning. She is a good writer and will be filled with vitriol and filled with lies. I mean, she will not tell the truth because she wants sensational headlines. That is the ultimate uh, weapon she can deploy. But I just think that the royal family at the moment here in London is a bit uh, sad. I mean, the illnesses, of course, have undermined their attraction, undermined their uh, visibility. And that, of course, what grieves me most is, of course, that that pleases Hagen, Meghan and Harry. They are the epitome of good health. And there's Charles and, uh, and Camilla and, of course, uh, Kate, all unwell. And that, of course, is a great tragedy for us. Well, they have been quiet. I mean, I, I don't remember Meghan saying anything for months and months and months, possibly last year, maybe. I mean, I, I, she's been incredibly quiet. Can we give them some kind of credit here? Have they reined in their attacks because they understand that the, the King and Princess of Wales are seriously unwell? No, I don't think so at all. I think that uh, she's allowed Harry to make the running. I mean, she is reserving herself for her autobiography. It's much better for her to be seen as the silent uh, princess, a duchess 
the silent weapon in reserve. I mean, Harry, um, after all, has said some pretty unfortunate things when he came across and uh, didn't see his father on his way to Nigeria. But Nigeria said it all. The visit to Nigeria, you didn't need words uh, from Meghan to say what it was all about. It was about, we are the royal family in a Commonwealth country, the most important probably in Africa. And that said it all. It was a brilliant coup. Uh, put the royal, British royal family, our royal family, uh, into a very, very difficult position, intentionally so. And that unfortunate uh, occurrence is, again, the palace should never have ag agreed. They should never, they should have lobbied the Nigerians not to allow the Sussexes to come because, of course, they were upstage in a vitally important Commonwealth country. So spinning it forward, are you concerned? Because I'm led to believe that they will do more of these trips. You know, th this suited them because I was at the Invictus Games last September and the Nigerian defence minister turned up and uh, he sat at the front with Harry and Meghan. I think this is where it all started, their trip to Nigeria, because Meghan had said she was a certain percentage Nigerian heritage. What are the pitfalls that they could fall in? Or what's the problems they can cause to the royal family if they end up having more royal tours around, around the world? Well, of course they will, as the royal, and as the royal family, because of Charles's and Kate's illnesses, are unable to travel as much as they would like, or travel at all. The presence of... Uh, Meghan and Harry in Commonwealth countries will be absolutely damaging to the royal family. And that, of course, is a serious problem because, after all, uh, Anne can't travel and, uh, you know, William rightly feels he should be with his own children so it's, and wife. So it's very difficult. Uh, the only question is whether the British Foreign Office and, the, and Number 10 can persuade Commonwealth countries not to host Meghan and Harry because it's damaging. In and what way is it that. damaging, Tom? Well, think? it's damaging because they appear as royals. They appear as representatives of the British royal family. And like they're a not. rival royal court. So exactly, and they're not. They are, they are doing it for their own self-promotion, to, to profit from their association with the royal family, the same royal family who they deserted and have humiliated and have um, damaged. And that's the problem that uh, Meghan delights in this. Uh, but what's interesting is that she's really so unpopular. Uh, uh, she, 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 in, despite her unpopularity in America now, and obviously in England, she still manages always to create, understandably, a furor when she travels. And that is her intention, because she loves the spotlight. Everything is geared to her self-promotion. Well, it, it, the, the self-promotion was always going to be the problem. So, you know, when the late Queen signed off on the, on, the, on the Megxit agreement, it was that they couldn't use the royal titles um, to, you know, to make themselves money. They couldn't use HRH, they couldn't use Sussex Royal. That, that was the key, uh, the, you know, the key settlement, part of the settlement that really, you know, that really stopped them from doing what they wanted to do. Do you feel, therefore, that they are pushing the boundaries and that maybe, you know, they are overstepping the line and maybe the King needs to step in again? Well, I think there, there are two things there. First of all, the problem is that they betrayed. that they, they actually, in the end, ignored the agreement that they settled on because allegedly they were going to California for privacy and to, to leave the royal family, and they've done the exact opposite. But I think part of the problem has been the weakness of the king. He should never have allowed, uh, agreed, for their children to get royal titles after the queen's death. And he should have stripped them of their titles and actually made a declaration that they're no longer representatives or members of the royal family. 